So in this segment, we're going to be talking about a story that's made me um, incredibly angry, and I don't know who to point the blame at for this story. So we're going to be very careful in uh, what we say um, in this segment, because it's tough. This one's a tough one to talk about. Um, so fury at do not resuscitate notices being given to COVID patients with learning disabilities. This is something I saw last year, I think, and you know they've there's more news about this, and you know it's always worth covering these sorts of stories because it shows you how bad uh, we can be um, as humans, or at least it shows the worst side of us. Um, so people with learning disabilities have been given do not resuscitate orders during the second wave of the pandemic in spite of widespread condemnation for the practice last year and an urgent investigation by the care watchdog. So what we know is that people with um, disabilities um, uh, disabilities have been um, learning disabilities, should I say, um, have been given do not resuscitate orders. Now, we don't know specifically who gave these orders, Um for for these people to um have these do not resuscitate um orders or notices on them but what we do know is that this is not what they wanted and we also know that this was a deliberate ploy by somebody to essentially kill off a lot of people with learning disabilities you know kind of like eugenics you know where you're getting rid of certain people from the gene pool um because you know because they have things like learning dis- um, difficulties Mencap said it had received reports in January from people with learning disabilities that they had been told um, they would not be resuscitated if they were taken ill with COVID. So clearly these people were told beforehand, before they were even in an ICU unit, um, uh, sorry, an ICU, um, that ICU bed that they, if they caught COVID and were severely ill, they would not be resuscitated. So someone actively had told these people with learning dis- disabilities this. So it's important to find out who, who gave these orders. The Care Quality Commission said in December that inappropriate do not attempt um, cardiopulmonary um, resuscitation DNA CPR notices had caused potentially avoidable deaths last year. So we know that these notices have caused deaths that weren't necessarily going to happen last year. So we know that people have been essentially killed um, by whoever put these um, you know notices um, onto these people, whoever gave the order that these people should not be resuscitated. Um, if they come ill with COVID. Um, DNA CPRs are usually made for people who are too frail to benefit from CPR, but MenCap said some seem to have been issued for people simply because they had learning disabilities. The CQC there, the Care Quality Commission, is due to publish a report on the practice within weeks. The disclosure comes as campaigners put pressure um, on ministers to reconsider a decision not to give people with learning disabilities priority for vaccinations. There is growing evidence that even those with a mild dis- um, disability are more likely to die if they contact the coronavirus. So, you know, we can see that. Um, so there's more to this story to add and then we can we can give some you know more analysis. Although um, some people with learning disabilities such as Down syndrome were in one of the four uh, groups set up by the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, um, which the government promised would be offered the vaccine um, by tomorrow. Many were classified as lower categories of need and are still waiting. So what we can gather from this story is that the um, the uh, group which allowed the UK to use the vaccine earlier than the uh, European equivalent said that people with things like Down syndrome should be prioritised in one of the four major groups for vaccinations, but the government didn't do that. So essentially, you can argue here that the government is, um, um, what do you call it? He, they, they are, sorry, um, kind of carrying out eugenics in the sense of they are basically um, cutting out people with disabilities who are in the vulnerable category, one of the four vulnerable categories, um, for whatever reason. It could be, you know, eugenics, you could try and argue that, or it could be that the government, um, you know, being arrogant and stupid, or saying that, you know, well, you know, there are other people who need the care more, despite the scientists saying otherwise. You can infer what you want on that one. Um, it's very hard for me to give you a definite answer to that. So, you know, that's up to you. Um, NHS figures released last week show that one um, that, that in the five weeks since the third lockdown began, COVID-19 accounted for 65% of deaths of people with learning disabilities. Figures from the Office of National Statistics show that the rate for the general population was 39%, although the two statistics are drawn from different measurements. So although this won't be an exact science, 
what you can see is that people with learning disabilities um, on um, uh, a lot of them died with COVID. Um, so what we can gather from this is the fact that people with you know disabilities either were not or learning difficulties, however you want to um, put this as, um, you know, we'll say learning difficulties because that, that's what the article says as well. People with learning disabilities like uh, Down syndrome um, were not protected uh, or were not shielded by the government and we can see that a lot of them have um, a lot of people have died um, with learning disabilities um, down to potentially government actions younger people with the learning with learning disabilities aged 18 and 34 are 30 more are 30 times more likely to die of covid than people the same age so we can see that people with a certain learning disabilities um, are far more vulnerable than um, people without them you know these are young people 18 to 34 these are very young people um, that have died from COVID. Um, Edel Harris, MenCap's chief executive, said throughout the pandemic, many people with learning disabilities um, have faced shocking discrimination and obstacles to accessing healthcare with um, inappropriate do not resuscitate um, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, DNACPR, um, notices put on their files and cuts made to their social support. So we don't know who again it's frustrating but we don't know who put these dna cpr notices but what we do know is there were cuts to social care support and the people who control social care support are the government so and, and i think councils as well so we can see is that these people were cast aside now it could be down to incompetency it could be down to you know thinking uh, these people don't need the money or it could be down to eugenics these are the possibilities here of why that we knew these people are far more likely to die and so we cut their support so why did we do this why did the government do this these are the questions that need to be asked it's unacceptable that within a group of people hit so hard by the pandemic who even before covid died on average over 20 years younger than the general population many are left feeling scared and wondering if i have been left out so you know we know that this especially these the last you know conservative governments have made massive cuts to um, people with disabilities have made it way harder for people with disabilities to gain any access to any money that they are entitled to they are entitled to for living within this country and having the disabilities that they have um and you know these people have been cast aside by you know multiple prime ministers now and you know when covid hit they were not prioritized when it comes to vaccines they were not looked after properly during the worst of the pandemic um and a lot of people have died due to this our death numbers are exceptionally high not just because of care homes but evidently because of the um the impact it's had on people with learning disabilities that covid has had on people with learning disabilities the jcvi and government must now act to help save the lives of people of the lives of, pe of some of the most of society's most vulnerable people by urgently prioritizing all people with a learning disability for the vaccine more than 14 million people have received a first vaccine dose so far and care providers who spoke to the observer said many people with learning disabilities have been vaccinated in the last week but some are still waiting one woman from the midwest who has a rare form of down syndrome told the observer she's still not being given a date yet so the government obviously prioritizing people who are much um, older for the vaccine of the first for the first dose of the vaccine when the um when the jcvi told them that people with learning disabilities um should be prioritized as well so now the government's finally got around to actually helping these people when they should have done so beforehand but it's still um there's still a ways to go here with um the vaccine for people with learning disabilities more than 14 million people have received a vaccine dose so far and care providers who spoke to the observer um, said many people with learning disabilities had been vaccinated in the last week but some are still waiting oh i'm just sorry i've just mentioned that it's really frustrating it's been a fight and it shouldn't have been a fight she said her condition means she's in a category she's in category four people who are clinically extremely vulnerable but her gp did not have details of her condition on record a common problem according to mencap so here there's another problem with things like gps and databases where this person with a rare condition of a, a, a rare um i think it is a rare condition of um down syndrome was not prioritized at all and that her gp was not aware of um her disability which is very very strange and it's according to mencap a common problem clearly something more needs to be done when it comes to things like databases 
I had to call them a lot of times, she said. The practice accepted last week that she needed to be vaccinated, she said, but she was still waiting for, um, she was still waiting for people in a similar situation to me. They won't have um, been badgering them as much as me. So what happens to those people? A lack of badgering is part of the reason why people with learning disabilities may be uh, more likely to die of COVID-19 than the rest of the population, according to Dr. Kerry uh, Michelle Lodge, a consultant in learning disability um, psych psychiatry in Leeds. Doctors often don't understand what someone with learning disabilities may not be able to communicate their symptoms, she said. Carers are sometimes not listened to. You might notice something is wrong, but that is often written off as part of the behaviour. And clearly there's something, a broader conversation needs to be had here, especially if GPs are not listening to people with learning disabilities and if they're not listening to the carers. If GPs are doing this, then there has to be a massive conversation within the um, British Medical Association of stop ignoring people when they tell you they have symptoms. I think women, I've read stories about women who have similar problems with GPs where women talk about you know their physical um, issues and things like that and GPs are like just walk it off or here's some basic meds when they need something much more uh, stronger so um, this is a common problem with the GPs and clearly the this is something the BMA have to deal with this is something the BMA have to deal with and open up a broader conversation about you know actually listening to people with problems you know I myself have gone you know to the doctors where I've had issues and you know they they just the some of the advice they give you like I'm not a medical professional but you know, in my heart of hearts, I know what they've told me is a load of lies. Well, I know what they ha they haven't looked after me properly. And so I can't imagine what it's like when you're a person who is trying to explain their symptoms, who is struggling to explain their symptoms and is often ignored, especially even when your care is ignored. That must be incredibly frustrating for someone to have to deal with. And it isn't right. There's clearly a broader conversation that needs to be had in society amongst doctors and something the BMA has to deal with. Um... So people with learning disabilities already get a raw deal from the health services. Fewer than two in five with a learning disability live until they are 65. You know, this is in, you know, a developed country, by the way. An analysis by the Office of National Statistics last week shows that six in 10 COVID deaths were people with a disability. And so you can see here that it's incredibly high. And it's not just down to the way the, the, um, the virus works. It's also down to the amount of help that is offered to people with disabilities. The biggest factor associated with the increased death rate of COVID, uh, the um, increased death um, fr from their analysis, was living in care homes or residential settings, Lodge said. They prioritised people in care homes for vaccinations, but that was only for older adults. They completely forgot about people with learning disabilities in a really similar setting. I don't know if the government were blindsided or just neglectful. You know, it's very hard to tell with this government, honestly. Professor Martin Green, OBE. Um, Care England's chief executive said, as the largest representative body for independent providers of adult social care, Care England remains concerned that the government has not given individuals with learning disabilities a higher level of priority for the, vac the COVID vaccine. So what we can gather from this is the, um, the leader of Care, um, Care England um, has said that the government hasn't prioritised people with learning difficulties or disabilities. The um, you know, the JVC, I think that's what their um, acronym was. The people who authorised the vaccine within the UK said people with learning difficulties should be um, prioritised for the vaccine. Um, so what can we gather from this? The government is not following the science and is not vaccinating people with learning difficulties or disabilities, however you want to say it. So what what can we say from this you know is the government being neglectful is this incompetency or is this malice it's very hard to tell hamlin's razor will tell you don't attribute malice where you can in, uh, attribute incompetency but clearly decisions were made to vaccinate people who are you know elderly um instead of prioritizing them and people who had learning difficulties you know that's the these are the questions we need to ask ourselves and the government you know why were these priorities given when we know that people with learning difficulties are more likely to die from covid as well as elderly people why was one prioritized above the other instead of doing them together these are the questions we need to ask we urge the government to remove the arbitrary distinction between prioritizing those with a severe and profound learning disability and those with a mild or moderate learning disability and prioritize all of those with a learning disability in priority group four. So clearly the government should be prioritizing people who are in priority group four rather than certain people within priority group four. That would make the most sense in this case. People with learning disabilities must not be overlooked at any time. Um, you know, there's a correction in the article which 
uh, was amended to remove an incorrect reference to learning difficulties. I think they replaced that with um, learning disabilities. Um, and so, you know, hopefully I've worded everything as best um, right. I, I apologize if there's any offense from this video of, you know, the way the words that I've used when it comes to learning difficulties, disabilities and things like that. But the main point of this article was to say that um, somebody within you know the top ranks of the government or within um you know care not care england uh, public health england or one of the top medical groups have put on do not resuscitate notices onto people with disabilities who should not have had those notices on and we're not clear why but this looks like a clear example of eugenics especially when you combine that with the lack of vaccinations given to people with disabilities it's very hard to tell you know what decisions no sorry who made the decisions and for what reason we can only try and figure them out through educated guesses and speculation but my sort of one between the two um speculation and educated guess is that um this looks like eugenics they do not resuscitate orders look like eugenics i'm gonna try and be kind here and say maybe the government didn't prioritize um you know people with learning difficulties as they should have done they prioritize older people instead it's unclear why that is is that the right thing to do probably not both should have been prioritized but you know um no doubt the government will say oh you know in hindsight that's a wonderful thing and blah 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 um but you know the main things we can learn from this video is that the government um that what we can learn from this video is that people with disabilities have been failed learning disability uh, difficulties have been failed by um somebody within um the healthcare system i don't know who but um, through those do not resuscitate orders and we know that the government has further failed people with learning difficulties um, by not prioritizing them with vaccines we also know that these last three governments have made massive cuts to people with disabilities and learning difficulties um, and the last thing we learn is that gps need to start listening to people um, especially those with um, learning difficulties and especially more on, on top just as much as important to listen to their carers in order to give them the help the action the help they actually need rather than trying to just wave them off as it seems that gps are doing um but yeah i don't know i don't want to tarnish all gps with that brush just because i've had a bad experience with one um you know i've had better experiences with other gps but clearly there is an issue within you know with some doctors and the bma have to start talking to doctors and start trying to improve the situation but um, yeah, you know, I've done a lot of talking in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.